brought out. And it says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Mm -hmm. Hey, and that's what he's doing. He's visiting this place, man. For all the uh, iniquity that has been going on in this place, man. Yep, visiting by way of earthquakes, by, by way of pestilence, all right? We in a pandemic. You got people walking around outside with masks on, all right? That's, that's the Lord he visited in this place. All right, verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and upwars of the people in the world, all right, and the earthqu uh, those earthquakes and upwars, you know, is happening, especially, you know, uh, in, in, in a different, uh, these different countries, you know, in, in Italy, you got it in Amsterdam, all right, in um, Kakas uh, Kazakhstan? Kazakhstan. Yeah, Kazakhstan. You know? Then it says, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. All right? And this movie, all right, it, 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 was, it was just like any movie. All right? It, 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 it was, um, it was, it was written. All right? This, 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 mo this story has been written from the beginning. All right? And we just playing, everybody just playing their roles. All right, whether whether you're a scoffer, all right, um, Esau, somebody got to play the devil, you know, some, somebody got to be the righteous men, all right, and Lord willing, we, we we are found to be those righteous men. Right. Verse five, for for like as all that is made in the world has a beginning and the end, and the end is manifest. manifest. You know, and we see in the end manifest. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Oh yeah, come. Verse seven, and every one that shall be saved. It shall be able no, to... Verse six, verse six, verse six. Oh, Khan, Salaki. Second Edges 9 and 6. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and, and effects and signs. See, and endings and effects and signs. And we've seen them signs like the Brother Ball was going into. How many earthquakes have we seen, man, in 2021? Now it's, it's coming through 2022. So the Heavenly Father is showing himself, man. And we still in January, y'all. Come. <laughs> we still in January, y'all. <laughs> it didn't feel like it. We still in January, man. We got what about a week left. Uh, so like y'all. Hey, Nate, you gonna eat your words too because uh, this doesn't didn't the article just come out the other day saying in June they want to start doing the trials for the uh, for the paradigma? Right. It's June, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Hey, you gonna see, man. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, they got they got a commercial now. Yeah. IUIC, see they got a commercial. Hey, but you know, I was like, hey, man, through the spirit at the end of the day, it is what it is, really, because you can do nothing against the truth before the truth, man. Right. So all y'all doing is y'all helping the ministry, all right, bringing, uh, the, find the righteous elect, man. So it is what it is. It's through the spirit. All right, now. You even had, uh, Pick up, uh, hey, pull them pants up, brother. Yes, all right, now. We even had uh, Amazon yesterday. They, uh, they got a new store in Los Angeles. Where uh where you can check out with with, with the palm of your hand, right. and uh the other day Elon Musk they were saying Elon Musk he, he's near to uh for the brain chip, right. Right. you know so uh, what, what the scripture says in Revelations uh, yeah. should not buy or sell yes they have the mark in their right hand or in their forehead, uh, you know so he's uh, he's playing out prophecy <laughs> right, right, right. That's big. he's playing out prophecy right right in front all right so you got to be a, a damn fool to not see. I see that the uh, that the MOTV right, is this chip, man. But uh, our people are in, they're, they're too busy with entertainment, man. Especially amongst you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. It's like every after, you know, there's always a situation that's happened amongst our people, man. What, what, what? Okay, uh, this person got beef with this person all of a sudden. All right, now uh, this drama and then that drama. It's like it's back to back to back to back. But that Esau Edom, he's setting it up like that, man. He's setting up controversy amongst our people to keep us entertained, man. To keep us distracted, all right? But the elect, we're not going to be deceived. And Lord willing, we're part of that number. The elect of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are not going to be deceived because you're watching. A lot of our people, they're not watching, all right? We're at the end and they, they can't see anything because they're not, they're not seeking the counsel of the Lord. They're not hearing the words that are being spoken that are, uh, uh, from the men that are out on the highways and byways, from the men that are doing these lessons on YouTube. They're closing their ears, man. They don't want to hear the words of the Most High. But that's to their that's to their end, man. That's to their detriment, man. Yo, and that's and that's that really and and that that's starting with these other camps too, because these other camps, you know, you got Sakari here, yeah, they believe in the chip, but do they do they push it like like Great Millstone? No, no, nobody does, man. It's only Great Millstone that that's that, that, that's pushing prophecy, you know, as, as we should, because it says 
the testimony of Yahweh Shai is a spirit of prophecy. Testimony goes into witness. All right, so you got to be prophesying. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai, he was out prophesying. All right, he, he said uh, the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When he began preaching, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. Right. It's it's all about you, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Every time we over here trying to teach our people, Esau Edom is trying to deflect, deflect, deflect. No, don't listen to them. Entertainment, you know. Don't listen to them. Here, here, here's something else. You know, don't listen to these people. But they can't stop this word from 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 uh, going out, man. But they're trying so hard. That's why Esau Edom, the the average uh, uh, so-called white man, they know about the microchip. Right. They know about all these things that uh, their, their, their elites are trying to do. They know. But our people, they're too busy in the world. And this is how you know we're at the end because how come every time we say the word, you know, CHIP, all right, and we're, we got we to gotta, we gotta speak in code now when we're talking about the Revelation 13 and 16. This is how you know we're at the end. You know what I'm saying? Before, they used to clip our videos when we talked about Esau. Now the whole world knows who Esau is for the most part. Now, we got to speak in code when it comes to the Revelation 13 and 16, man. That's so how you know that we, these are the signs of the times, man. You see, that, that's ultimately what it come down to, man. They trying to stop truth, man. You can't, hey, actually, give me that, uh, what's that, Acts 8 and 38? You know, they, they want to stop truth. And you, you can't stop truth. Truth is always going to prevail, man. When you read uh, Luke 12 and 2, it talks about everything that is uh, in the darkness shall come to the light, man. Everything's going to be revealed, Okay. There ain't nothing in the darkness that's not going to come to the light. Every wickedness that's been sown in this place is being rooted out, man. All right. All right? And that's because we're preparing, we're preparing, looking for a kingdom. All right? So we got we to gotta find all the wickedness. You got to, uh, it's just like uh, when you have uh, venom inside of, if somebody gets bit by a snake, you got to get all the venom out, man. All right? If you don't give all the venom out, they might be subject to death or sickness, man. You got to get it all out. Uh, the one where it says, if this work be of men. Yeah. Uh, this Acts uh, chapter 5, verse five. Two, uh, 5 and 38, it five. says, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel of work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of the Most High, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against the Havashmael Shah. See, and this is how you know the men of old were doing the same things that we're doing now, man. All right? They were trying to stop the word then, man. All right? They were trying to stop... Uh, uh, Peter, they were trying to stop the disciples. They were trying to stop him to say, don't preach in the name, don't preach the word, you know? But this is not, this is not of men, man. That's why we're constantly out here. You people see us, you, you see us in all weather conditions, all right? We out here rainy, sunlight, snow, cold. It ain't snow down in Florida, but hey, man, the brothers up north, they doing it too, man. Right, these, all right? These, these heathens, man, they're waiting for a slowdown. They, they, they waiting for us to just, you know, I can't, completely give up. I can't wait for the Sunday where them niggas ain't there. Right. You know, that's, that's what they're waiting for, man. But that's going to be your worst nightmare, man. Right. You see, because the one time that did happen was when C-19 popped off. Right. right. And then people, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, we, we gave it one last little hurrah, came out here, and there was nobody out here but us. Come. You know, but after that, you know, that's when brothers start doing it in their habitations and things like that. But that day is going to be bad when the prophets aren't on the street anymore, when the men of the Lord are not out here giving the word, man. So, but this ain't of men, man. You can't stop this work, man. This is, this is the will of God, man. This is the will of the Heavenly Father. So you, if you want it to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. All right? But you people, y'all don't want it to come to pass, man. Y'all, like the brothers were talking about earlier, y'all love this society. You love Babylon. But when this place, when you, when you see missiles coming down on you, you're going to re reject your previous decision and going to say, you know, I don't love this place anymore. All right? Save me. Save, yeah, save me. Save me. Oh, let me go up with you, man. You know, can I, can I jump in your beam? Hell no, man. You know, it's going to be a wrap. You people are so in tune with a place that's meant for your destruction. Your doctors don't care about you. Your hospitals don't care about you. Your governments don't care about you. Your churches don't care about you, man. The only part, get, uh, real quick, uh, I think Wisdom of Solomon 5, he has care for his elect. You see, it, it, don't nobody care at the end of the day but the Heavenly Father about the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right? You people are living in a society where none of your, your governmental agencies care what the hell happened to you. Your doctors will give you pharmaceuticals just because so they can get inflation and increase in their, increase in their profits. Right. That's a problem. When the person who's set up to be your physician can give you, prescribe you medication based on the profits that they're going to receive from it instead of actually trying to heal you. That's problematic. You see? You got it, brother. Uh, I think it's Wisdom Solomon 3. Yep, yep. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth mm -hmm. 
and such as be faithful in love shall abide with them. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care for his elect. So you people always wonder about, about grace and mercy, man. All right, we want, we want God's grace to shine upon us, man. He said that's reserved for the elect, man. He has care for his elect. So we, while we're in a society where none of you people care about us and your governments don't care about you, your, your, your uh, centurions don't care about you, your police force, your task enforcement don't care about you, but we got a power that cares, man. And he happens to be the power of powers, man. So what we got to worry about? Right. But all of you people, all of the things that you leaned on, man, all right, it's going to be your demise, man. Y'all going to lean your hand upon that wall and that serpent going to bite you, man. Esau, Edom is going to be for your destruction, and people don't even realize that. Y'all going in cahoots with the same man that want to kill you. How foolish is that, man? All right, that's why Sarak, what's that, 12? Uh, it says, uh, never trust thine enemy. You see? You can't, you can't trust your enemy, man. And you people have been trusting in the enemy for too long. And you're going to see, they're going to they're destroy you very, very soon. And we're going to rejoice in that, man. All right? The so-called white nation is going down, man. Y'all right. thought, like, like, let's be real, man. Y'all, I saw a picture. Uh, it had a Jake on it with a crown and a beard. And uh, Elder Yashwama put it up. And it had an a, a Edomite with buck teeth. And then the, the Jake was saying to him, man, you can't even stand in the sunlight. And the other dude was saying, I'm superior. You can't even stand in the sunlight too long. How are you superior, man? You see? You got this it, is Sirach Ecclesiastes 12, starting at verse 13. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? Or any such as come nigh? Wild beasts. Yep, and ultimately, you people are, uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, those Elamites, they, they playing a little horn and playing a flute and getting the snake to dance, man. All right, you people are uh, sitting up, you're playing with the serpent now, man. You're playing with Esau, Edom, all right, thinking that everything's going to be sweet. But when that snake bites your ass, man, don't be caught off guard, all right? We, we, we ain't going to have no pity on you, man, because you believe in the same man that's going to destroy you. And we be sitting back waiting and be like, man, look at him. He look like a fool. Look at him. That snake gonna bite his ass. Mm -hmm. We just waiting. You just wait. We waiting for the bite, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got it, brother. So one that goes to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? That's right. Hey, so why would, why would we pity? That's just like uh, we heard a dude that uh, was smoking cigarettes all his life and we told him to stop. And next thing you know, he, got, he talking like a goddamn robot on a commercial. Why would we have pity on you, man? You see? Why would we do that? Because we warned you of what not to do, and you kept on in that same sin, man. So he says, why would we have pity on a man that wallows in his sin, man? You whirl around in your damn sin like a dog in a mud bath, man. Yep. You know? So the Lord, the Lord ain't going to And the reason why we won't have no pity is because the Lord putting that spirit on us to reject this society, to reject you people, man. Because you rejected our Lord, all right? Y'all reject the chief cornerstone, man. So when we have the spirit to reject you, well, hey, it is what it is, man. Right. That's through the spirit. This place is through, man. This place is going downhill, man. America is going to be destroyed. Right. This is bad. <laughs> this is crazy, man. That made no damn sense, man. We truly in Babylon. This is Babylon according to the Bible. Next time y'all read about Babylon in some of them verses, it's talking about this place. All right? Go ahead, brother. Especially Revelation 18. Go ahead, brother. Isaiah chapter 13, the verse that's right everyone that is found shall be thrust through man all right and joined unto them shall fall by the sword and that's what's gonna happen to the two-thirds of our people being joined unto the edomites man being joined into the wicked of this earth all right, so the Lord said you're going to be thrust through. And what's that? What's going to be the main thrusting? It's going to be the missiles, man. It's going to be the main thrusting, man. All right, because when you have when a man has a sword and he put that sword in you, man, that's, he penetrates your body, man. How much more the missiles going to thrust you and destroy you, man? All right, or like the cats get uh, hit with a, uh, somebody shoot you, you getting thrusted through. Uh, they had a, a chick. Uh, uh, all right, now, sister. They had a, uh, they got a, uh, the chick, uh, she was a, a Peruvian. Right? She was Asher and she was a hit woman, man. She right, jumped right. she jumped off the off the bike and dropped <laughs> dropped four jakes right there, man. Yep. All right? And uh Adwan was like, damn, he can't even get the hammer out. Like, oh boy is struggling to get a shoddy out of this pants leg, man. It was too late. That lets you know your sword ain't and that was just a woman jumping off a motorcycle. Damn. We ain't talking about Jacob's trouble, man. With men who got skill 
is out here aiming and taking targets, man. That was a woman jumping off of a motorcycle with a gun, and you couldn't even take it that's, out fast enough. That's not an honorable death. It's not an honorable death. <laughs> hey, that, the scriptures talk about that. You don't want to be killed by a woman, man. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, fucking, uh, uh, what, Hel- Helophanes is, is great, regretting that, man. All right, getting his head slain by uh, Judith. <laughs> that's another reason why you shouldn't stumble at the beauty of a woman. Yeah. Right? Because they stumbled at Judith's beauty. You know what I'm saying? And look, that got his ass killed. Yep. Right. You know what I'm saying? They ain't saying you can't admire a woman's beauty, but hey, don't let it knock you off your wits, man. That's right. And she, uh, uh, they even, they even show you on that old, uh, what was it? It was probably a Batman movie, but Poison Ivy. Mm-hmm. What she would do, she'd look attractive, but what she would do is she would kiss you. Right. And then you could die. Right. And you see what I'm saying? So that, that, that lust for, for that, for a woman like that, stumbling upon her beauty can be for your destruction, man. Just like Babylon. Yep. Men go in, you got women that's cooking for you that you don't trust. She can put anything in your food, man. You know, they, it's a show called You, all right? This dude, uh, he thought his woman was going to poison him. She was so dece- deceptive that she, she, thought, she knew he was going to think that, so she didn't poison the food. She poisoned the knife to cut the, the thing because she knew he was going to grab the knife. So she poisoned the knife. You see what I'm saying? The wickedness of a woman, bro. Like, how she knows some shit like that, bro? She poisoned the knife instead of the food, man. You see, so hey man, you, you gotta you gotta be aware of the things you're doing. Like, you know, and I ain't telling you brothers don't let you if you trust your woman, hey, ain't nothing wrong with your woman cooking for you. But there's some brothers who don't trust their woman, they don't let Apostle Hart said that, I think. You know, he don't let his woman cook for him. You know what I'm saying? So hey man, you gotta you gotta be wise about your comings and your goings and the things you're doing, man. Right, because they may they may not be in agreement with the scriptures. Right, right. You know, they may they may despise you for that, man. Yep. You don't know what be on their mind, man, because these women they be plot. Maybe they be, you know, plot on how they gonna do something to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, man. Especially you know? like if they're if they're women, if they're uh, uh, of the women of like uh, uh, the, the, the the Levite tribe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if they don't like you with the, you know dealing with the scriptures, they gonna do something to your food. They gonna they gonna do something. They gonna they gonna uh, light up some candles right. when you're not around and you know do the thing because they, they they don't want you to go in that direction. They want you to service them. Hey, but see, this is why you gotta have the spiritual one up. He had the he had the, the one up on her because he saw her planting that shit back in the garden, and he just assumed that he she assumed he wasn't gonna go back there and look and see what it was. But he researched and found out what it was. So he 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 counter I forgot what he used, but he counteracted it so he would only be para, it was it would paralyze him. He paralyzed him. So he was he, he he sat there and made her think he was paralyzed, then took her ass out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So and that's what we got through the spirit because the scriptures talk about how. Uh, People basically poisonous things. People are gonna try to do those things to us, man. Put enchantments on us, put things in our food. All right, but the heavenly father is gonna preserve us, man. All right, he's gonna keep us from the things that these people are trying to do. Because the heavenly father saw saw them create that that poison, man. All right? Your weapon formed against these shall prosper. That's right. That's, That's why right. it says in Job where, where when they sit down at the table to eat, because they're gonna boast. They'll be like, we finally got them. And then the most high is gonna rain down uh, 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 fire and brimstone upon them, man. Mm-hmm. But they gonna think that they they gonna think that they finally won. We finally got Jacob. We destroyed them. You know we have control of everything. Ha 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 ha. The Most High's gonna rain down on them, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. This, hey, that's why King David said, "Let them not say aha. Right. You know, let them not rejoice over my downfall, man. Right. And now they gonna see that in these times of trouble. Like the Apostle Paul got bit by a serpent, and he ain't he ain't die. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I uh, think about that sometimes. Yep. Hey, this is Luke 10, starting at verse 18. It says, I shall start at verse 17. Mm-hmm. Luke 10 and 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Ooh. And it's like you. And it's how you know you need the Lord, man. All right? They subject unto us through his name, man. All right? You can't call on another power receiving to put uh, demons and devils and people in the check, man. Yep. All right? You're going to need Yahweh Shemi Shah in that name in order to put them down, man. Yep. And along with that name, the Lord's true spirit. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because the name is important, mm-hmm. but that's that's about like 70% of the battle, so to speak. That's 50, right. 50%. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't got the spirit behind the name, mm-hmm. them demons going to get on your ass. There that's was a right. story like that in Acts where he, he said, Paul, I know. Yeah, Yahweshua, right. I know. Well, who, who are, are you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the demon whooped his ass. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm leaving bitch naked. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, Jake be doing that shit. They be beating niggas' ass. They take your pools off. Mm-hmm. That demon uh, whooped his ass. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, this is uh, Luke 10 and 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Right, and this isn't talking about uh, Satan fighting against God and taking a third of the angels. That's not what that's referring to. 
Okay, and that's what they tell you in these churches. So you have a lack of understanding, man. All right, Satan falling down his lightning is uh, is tar- talking about uh, first off the uh, so-called elites and uh, the Esau, the nation of Esau Edom. All right, coming taken out of their rulership, man. That's right. All right, that's what that's referring to. All right, people are reading that. See, Satan fell down his lightning. He in he in hell running shit. Man, what are you talking about, man? All right, because you all you have a people on earth that are the physical counterparts of Satan, man, a spiritual demon Satan. Which are the Edomites, man, performing the will of Satan, man. And you be, and they show it to you, man. In every in every facet of life, man. Hey, they show it to you. You got it, man. It says you hear not knowing the scriptures. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. You yep. know, you see our people, they don't they can't see the evil and wickedness that Esau Edom is doing, man. Because they don't know what's good. You gotta know what's good, man. You gotta know what is uh, uh, uh commanded of you, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember, like, you know what? I All right, this Luke 10 and uh, 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions mm-hmm. and over all the power of the enemy, mm-hmm. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Mm-hmm. So, hey, the Lord is saying, look, man, we're about to get spiritual power. Where nothing's gonna be able to hurt us, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, unless the heavenly Father ordains it so, because certain brothers' lots is to uh, quote unquote die on this side, you know, shed the flesh. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, man, we still gonna be good in the spirit. Mm-hmm. We get them new bodies, not gonna be able to hurt us, man, at all. Yep. And that's and I did a weapon a, a lesson last night. Uh, you are the weapon, man. That's right, brothers. We gotta your, your mind state needs to be. These people aren't expecting to get power from the heavenly Father, uh-huh. right? We're expecting power, man. We're expecting to be turned into a, a, a sharp threshing instrument, man. All right? Well, you, you are the weapon, man. Eric, you got people out here, oh, man, you got a 9 millimeter, You got a gun. You got a Glock. Man, we are the weapon, man. All right? Man, that don't mean we're going to sit up here and we're trying to fight everybody on the street, but we're waiting for that day where the Lord is going to turn us into a hunters, into hunters to tread down our enemies, man. That's going to happen. That's biblical prophecy. All right? They, and they always have that in movies, like uh, where the, the, the person who got superpowers... They, they stepped into them powers. They might have been in the flesh before and regular, but next thing you, they know, they tapped into their spiritual powers, even on Brightburn. He thought he was a regular boy, right? But next thing you know, he started doing little things here and there. He knew he was different, all right? Next thing you know, he started torching shit. He flying, and what, what did he say? Uh, destroy the world, yep. take, take the, the world, world, take the world, take the world. Take the world. You see? And next thing you know, he started destroying things. So we're expecting all of these movies that y'all love, Marvel and DC and Capcom, we're going to be giving those spiritual powers soon, man. But with a lack of belief, that's too far-fetched for you. Right. What's a gun? What's a gun of spiritual power? Nothing, bro. Uh, you humans and their guns. You homo sapiens and their guns. <laughs> for real. <laughs> you know? Also, Magneto shit. Mm-hmm. Magneto, me, Magneto, me. If you pull a gun in front of Magneto, he gonna, cr- he gonna turn that shit into a Pepsi can. Yeah. You know how you smash yeah. a Pepsi yeah. can? Yeah. Oh, man, light work, bro. And, and this is the confusion with the people of the world. They, they won't laugh at us when we say things like that. But they'll deal with left-hand energy and see people floating and, and, right. and controlling people. So you will believe that, but you don't believe the, the, the spiritual powers that the Most High is getting ready to give unto his elect men? They carnal. Yep. That's, that's, that, that's that backwards thinking, man. Mm-hmm. That's that confusion. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Lord going to give it to us because he says, uh, blessed are those who have not seen and believed, man. Right. You see, we, ain't have, we don't got to see to know that we're getting spiritual powers. It's, it's written. It's written. So that means it's going to come to pass, man. And we just hoping we have those men to receive it, man. You got it, bro. It's Isaiah 59. I'm going to start at 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord, Yahweh saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. But, um, jump down to verse 18. According to, according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay Fury to his adversaries. Shalakia, can you start at um, 17? No. Isaiah 59 and 17. For he put on he put on righteousness. Let's start at 16. Isaiah 59 and 16. And he saw that there was no man. And wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness is sustained him. Yep, Yahweh Shai, he's, our, he's the Lord's right arm. He's our intercessor, man. Because in this place there's no judgment going out. But through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, he he made us kings and priests to the Heavenly Father. Abarad Zah, we be a part of the elect. And now we're executing judgment through the word. But when we get changed, we're going to literally execute judgment, man. Right. Because the scriptures say how the Father uh, leaveth all judgment to the Son That's in right. John the 5th chapter. So yep. 
in the kingdom to come, the most high, he's just gonna take the back seat, so to speak, man. He's still gonna be running everything, but he's gonna let us execute the judgment, man. Mm -hmm. You know? You got it, brother. 17. Well, he put on righteousness as a breastplate, breastplate, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. Yup, we, hey, like we're the weapon. Yep. We're gonna put on that breastplate of righteousness, that, that, that the spiritual armory, man, and then we're gonna be uh, girded up, man. Yep. All right, you're not gonna be able to see that, that, that shield over us, man. When they shoot them bullets at us, they just gonna see mortal bodies, mm -hmm. but we got that spiritual armor over us, man. And that's hard. Yep. That's hard. We, you know, cause you, when a man got a, a Teflon vest on, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, don't shoot him in the chest. Yep. But us, you ain't gonna know what to hit, man. You know, and that's why Wisdom of Solomon, I believe, 5 and 17. Uh, spirit. spirit. Go ahead, brother. It's Wisdom of <laughs> Solomon 5, starting at verse, uh, damn. I know, it's like so much in there. All right, I'll try to get straight to the point. This is a Wisdom of Solomon 5 and starting at 15. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord. And the care of them is with the most high. You have care for his elect. That's right. It says, verse 16, they shall receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. That's what we're looking for, man. All right, those same men who are going to get those crowns are going to be the same men who get that power. Go ahead. For with his right hand shall he cover them, mm -hmm. and with his arm shall he protect them. That's right, and that's all Yahweh Shai again, man. But we're going to be protected with that right arm, man, to, as a defense, man, to be saved in these times to come. You got it. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor. Mm -hmm. And that's the spirit I was meditating on that today. Jealousy is a rage of a man. That's right, brother. We're going to have that spiritual jealousy, man. We're going to be raging yep. in righteousness. That's indignation right there. That's right. It says, he shall take them his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon mm -hmm. for the revenge of his enemies. His, make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies, man. And who's the creature? The elect, man. Right. That's the creature that he's talking about to pull. Because two-thirds of our people, two-thirds of our people ain't talking about getting revenge on Esau and Edom. You know what I'm saying? Now, you got a couple overzealous Jakes that might, you know, in Jacob trouble, shit gonna go down. But that's not... That's not going to be out of uh, the uh, understanding of the scriptures. That's going to be for preservation of life, right? So we, we dislike them because of who they are and what they've done. Jay going to be out here. He ain't going to be looking like, oh, yeah, let me just go find me a so-called white man to do something too. It ain't going to happen like that. They're going to be trying to fight against the battles that they run into, man. Right. Verse you know? 18, he shall put on righteousness as a, blood, a breastplate mm -hmm. and true judgment instead of a helmet. Yep. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. Woo! He shall take holiness for an invincible shield, man. All right, holy is it makes you invincible. To be holy, it makes you invincible, man. Versus all of the wiles of the devil, versus the things you go through in life to, for a girded up mindset. Man, how much more in the in the, in the times to come? Well, we we're really gonna be invincible, man. All right, you ain't you gonna be you ain't they gonna be able to do nothing to you, man. But this word is what does that to you, man. This word is what transforms you to to be that new creature, to be able to receive those spiritual powers, man. Got it. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword, and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Mm -hmm. Talking about the world of Israel, man. Mm -hmm. John 3 16. Yep. We are the world, man. All right. Michael Jackson was on point when he said that. We are the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we are the children. And we're going to fight against the unwise, man. Talk about these heathen nations and you two thirds, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you two thirds, don't don't worry, man. The Lord said you're going to purge out the rebels of Israel, man. That's right. Hey, you got to go slot down. Are you good? Isaiah 59 and 18, according to their deeds, according, accordingly, he will repay, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh shall lift up a standard against them. You know, and that standard, you know, uh, is, is going back to a defense. All right. And it, 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 we're going to have to have spiritual powers, you know, especially how Esau eat them coming, you know, especially with those robots. All right. Those robot dogs. All right. You, you, they got they even got robot humans now. All right. With Robocop. You, you need you need uh, you need spiritual powers. To, to, to make it out of these times, you they know? Got, they got cloaking uh, technology. Yep, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, Japan and uh, China, they were showing it. Yep, yep. Cloaking technology. And don't let this zombie thing happen, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> zombie shit. That. Man, on top of all that, that zombie shit pop off, man. It's going to be a wrap for these people, man. All right? It's going to be a wrap for you people if the zombie apocalypse really occur, man. Y'all don't got enough guns. You ain't got enough bullets. You don't got enough faith. All right? You don't got it. You're not, you, you're not in shape. You know, you're going to need the Lord, man. 
The Lord is the only thing that can protect you in these times, man. See, we, we may sound like we're exaggerating, but the, the, but the Lord said it's going to be as a time that's never been since the world was made, man, since yeah, the world was right. created. Mm -hmm. So it may sound like we're exaggerating in the eyes of worldly men, but, man, you got to consider what the Lord has said. Right. It's going to far exceed all the wickedness and evil that's ever been on this earth, man. Mm -hmm. So we might we might sound crazy to worldly men, but man, we're considering the power of your Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was a Netflix series, Z Nation, where they had there was one there was one where uh where, where the dude he could have been bit because he was like one of them. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You know because because we just read the scripture, uh, having authority over spirits. You know so if you have that spiritual power, even if it is a zombie uh, zombie apocalypse, you know the, the those spirits are going to be subject unto you. World oh. War Z come. Where's the little boy? He was like bald headed. No, he's right. talking about Z. Oh, World uh, War Z. No, no, he's talking about Z, Z Nation. Nation. Oh, Z Nation. On Z, oh, yeah, on Z yeah, Nation, yeah. there was a guy. Murph. Who, Murph. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Murph. yeah, he was like, uh, basically, if he get bit, he get bit, you know, he'll be all right, you know, because they had like filled him up with all of the zombie shit or something like that. But he was like, I ain't never watched all the series, but he was waxing worse and worse, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> World War Z, there was something like that. Yep, uh, yep. With a little jit, he was bald headed. And all the zombies ran around, right? Yeah. But I think because uh, they said he wasn't infected or something. No, because you had to have a um, a, a, a more I think a mortal sickness. So yeah, the little boy had like cancer. Right. So basically, they needed a healthy host. Yeah. So what they would do is, if you had something that could that could kill you, such as cancer, they were they didn't the the, the zombies wouldn't see it. They would run past you because your your blood system wasn't proper. So you had a, some type of disease like cancer. Yep. You know, and we are spiritually sick. That's why we need your house. That's, right. That's right. You know, we ain't we ain't trusting that Esau as our physician, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in a room full of zombies and hey, that mark of exemption coming out the men. You were in a room of zombies and they just run all around you. Oh. You know, you be like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be hey, call all y'all by shooting outside, man. You know, <laughs> but that that's what's going to come. You got it, brother. This is second Matthew chapter nine, starting at verse five. The Lord Almighty, the power of Israel, smote them with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remedyless came upon him and sore torment from the gentle parts. Yeah, I forget what um what sickness he actually had. I don't know if it goes into it, but I remember, I remember reading over that. But the, he was through, man. You know, the Lord put a sickness upon him where he was going to, that mortality was going to come upon him, man. Wasn't nothing he could do about it. And that's how, that's how a lot of people are in these last days. They get that type of sickness. This is how you got to believe in the Lord to heal you, man. Because you can be in any type of situation. And it, the Lord put that type of sickness upon you, man. And they said, what does it say about his inward parts? What does it say? His innards? Uh, so I get it. A pain of the bowels of the came upon him. You have sore torments of the inner parts. Can you all of it? His stomach was hurting, heart hurting, you know, chest, his lungs. He going through it, man. All right, but uh, you need the heavenly Father to cure you of something like this, man. You see, when uh, Hezekiah, Hezekiah was sick. All right, had a, had a sickness in his feet, and he was going to die. All right, but he believed in the Lord, and the Lord added unto him, I believe, uh, maybe like fifteen years. The Lord added unto his life, man. You see, so when you when you come upon these things and you get, get that sickness. You need to know that the Lord is it can cleanse you and can heal you, man. All right? Because he, he could be doing that just to, uh, for, like, like Hezekiah, for a testimony. Because right. now you're like, now we can read back on that. All right? And be like, hey, yo, this, this man was saved even though he was completely sick. That's how you know all of you people taking that jab in your arm, you have a complete disbelief. There are many men in the scriptures who are almost to death, and the Lord healed them and brought, gave them more years in this earth, man. You see, but we're living in a society full of people that don't believe. So they'll go into a hospital and a hospital will shoot you up in your arm with something never heard of and abominable things. And then next thing you know, your, fam your family members are dying because they took something unknown potion in their arm. Man. Don't worry about it. It's the so-called white man. He knows what he's doing. Right, right. It's safe, buddy. It's <laughs> FDA approved. Got to go ahead, brother. This is Second Maccabees chapter 15, verse 7. But Maccabeus had ever short confidence that the Lord would help him. See, and that's the spirit that we need to come in, man. Having that confidence in the Lord, hey, that the Lord is with us, man. That he's dealing with us. See, but hey, these people in the world haven't built themselves up to that. Because uh, hey, our people think that it's gonna be like a light switch. In a time of trouble, we just gonna, we just gonna be able to just turn that switch on, man. But you gotta build it up now, man. Yeah. The fear of the Lord, that's, that's strong confidence. So you gotta have that fear. Right. That don't come in, you know, like even the, the time it took brothers to build up the faith that you got now. 
That shit ain't happening in a week. You know what I'm saying? You don't get your faith don't just enter you and then you you good on faith for a week. Now, granted, the Lord can do that, right? right? But it, this take time, man. Faith takes time to build up to the point where you believe all these words that's written in, man. Right. All right, go ahead, brother. You got it. Luke chapter four, verse thirty-eight. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and left her. See, and she said, so she, soon as she got up, she started serving, man. And you see, she was struck with fever, and you can die of a fever, man. All right, but nonetheless, she believed. And there was a get that one about, uh, I believe, Eliza brothers. Um, that a lot, uh, this happened with Eliza and another situation where I was shot. But I believe it was Eliza went up into a woman's house and uh, and healed the daughter, if I'm not mistaken. The son. She, or a son, she healed, she healed, uh, she healed, he healed the, 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 the son, right? Okay, okay, yeah. If y'all can find that for me, Bob Kushat. But you see, it, things th these are, and see, I'm glad we're going through this now because we're in a time of sickness in the earth, right? Uh, and so, we need to talk about sicknesses that can be healed through the spirit of the Lord, man. Go ahead, brother. This is uh, first Kings 17, starting at verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? You see, so she, <laughs> th th that's the spirit that she was just like, to bring my, my, bring my sin to remembrance, right? And, and slay my son, because you, you start thinking of all of the things that you've done wrong, the things, decisions you could have made better, all right? And take away my son, all right? Go ahead. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. Mm -hmm. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon him his own bed. And see, that got to take faith too. You got your son, you holding your son, a man of the Lord, like, give him to me. You know what I'm saying? It, you got to take faith because when people, people like that and they got their child and they holding their child or something like that, they get worried. They're like, I'm just not giving them to you, man. Who knows what you're going to do to him? All right, go ahead. And he cried unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my power. Has thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I saw Jordan by slaying her son? Mm -hmm. And see, uh, uh, he was living with them for a, for a time, right? So he's like, are you are you brought you gonna bring judgment upon this widow? So the, the the husband wasn't there either, right? Go ahead. And he stretched himself upon the child three times mm -hmm. and cried unto the Lord mm -hmm. and said, Oh Lord, my power, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. You see, so he was praying to the heavenly Father in his correct name, man. All right, asking him, crazy. he was crying unto the Lord to ask for salvation, man. I mean, ask to uh, uh, heal this child, man. You see, but in today's society, you people don't believe in the Bible. You go to the doctor, and the doctor, like, he comes out, he say, I'm sorry, I have bad news for you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I said, y'all give your child to the murderer, man. Right. You see? Go ahead, brother. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. You see that? So, hey, he, the, hey, he was basically dead. <laughs> he said the soul came back into the child, and he was revived. This child was dead, but a man of the Lord healed him, man. Right. That's why it's important to know who these men are, man. Right. Right? That's as important to know what these men are talking about, because, but you people, y'all going to say, when, when is a doctor brought out a Bible scripture to you about healing, man? They don't, because they don't get paid off Bible scriptures. They get paid on prescribing you meds to kill you, man. Was that it on that? Uh, I'm probably so. Um, did you find that? I saw you looking at Matthew. Did you find another one? I got one. Go ahead, brother. It was one. Oh, you got it. Thank you. You, you can go. Oh, you want to continue? Uh, continue. First oh, continue. Yeah. 17, starting at verse. 23 and Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother and Elijah said see thy son liveth and the woman said to Elijah now by this I know that thou art a man of the most high and that the word of the Lord is in in thy mouth is true see so and, and see this is it was not I'm saying it not I'm really thinking about the situation he came back he's like your son liveth so that's when her faith increased even more. Right. She had to see the works. And she said, now I know you're a man of the Lord. And the things you were saying were true. And so this, is, this might be happening to your family members, man. You might have a family member, your, your, your little niece or some, uh, 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 your cousin about to die. And then you, you walk in a room and you like, give them to me. 
All right. And, and I've used, you'll be seeing little moments like this in the spirit, even now in the flesh. Right. right? But you'll be seeing little moments, but you're going to like, give them to me. When, oh, then they tried everything else. You're going to like, give them to me. So then when you're going to heal them, the Lord going to put the spirit on you to heal them. And then you're going to come back and you're going to be like, he good. And your family be like, hey, now we know you're a man of the Lord. Now we know what you've been saying is true. And it's sad it got to come to that, but that's all for a witness and a testimony for the Lord, man. If I may, I remember Pastor Hart saying that, hey, Lord will only be a part of that number, but he gonna make us famous. And in a way, that's right. hey, that's how he gonna do it, that's man. That's right. Do, hey, do the marvelous works that we're about to be doing. Lord will only be a part of that number. That's it. That's right. It says the Lord's fame went through all, all, the, all the earth. Right. You see, and how, what was the main reason for his fame, for his teachings, and for his healings, man? Right. Is that men were following him because of the great miracles he was doing, man. So that, that's how, that's where that part of that praise and fame gonna come from. They gonna be like, hey, yo, man, this, this, that dude had, that dude was quadruple jabbed, you know, and he, he was out of there, you know, and, this, <laughs> and he healed him. You see what I'm saying? Th these things are going to happen. That's one thing that we cannot heal you from, and that's that chip. We can't heal you from that, man, all right? You're going to get an incurable, grievous sore after that, all right? The Lord's judgment has come upon you, man. That healing is, is not going to happen. Because that's the decision that you made. That's right. That's right, you know? Hey, there's a story, too, with Alicia. He healed a... Uh, a son that died. You know, Peter brought someone back from the dead. Yahweh brought people back from the dead, mm -hmm. man. You know, and through this word, we're bringing people back from the dead, man. Uh, All right, that's really what it is. There's a, uh, another brother. Um, his name, I think, starts with an E in the New Testament. I can't think of it. Uh, it's not Icarus, but it's something like that. But he was sitting on the window watching, uh, I think, uh, uh, Peter or Paul teach. And he fell off the window. He fell asleep and fell off the window. And he died. And then the brother healed him. The disciple healed him and brought him back to life. I can't remember his name, though. Ah, it's going to kill me. He's going to bite me up. But uh, you got it, Q. This is uh, James chapter 5, starting at 13. Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any married, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up, and if ye have committed sins, they shall be forgiven them. Mm -hmm. All right, you know. So praying in that name of the Lord. All right, uh, if you if you uh, anoint somebody with, with that anointing oil, all right, and, and pray in faith, that anointing oil with the prayer of faith in the name of Yahweh Shemayah man. If you have that faith, man, you, you you can be you can be delivered. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you can have the worst sickness, man. You can still be delivered with that name of the Lord. Man. That's, that's, right, how, that's why it's so powerful. That's right, brother. Hey, the brother out of wine found it. Oh, right. I said Icarus, so it rhymed with it, so it's spirit. <laughs> I knew it somewhere in the water. This Acts uh, 20 and starting at verse 9. And there sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. Right. Paul, I'm sorry. Paul was uh, teaching like throughout the night. You know, he was in it. throughout the, he had a long sermon, you know, he was teaching throughout the night. And so uh, Eutychus was a young man and he was sitting in the window trying to watch. But Salak, I, I didn't know you were done, brother. It says, and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. Mm -hmm. When he therefore was come up again, he had and had broken bread. And eaten and talked a long while, even till the break of day, so he departed. That's right. So, hey, he said his life was still in him, man. And these things are done through the miracles of the Lord, man. You see, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the that's also due to Eutychus' faith. Eutychus, who, who, that's what the scriptures talk about, uh, much study, make a weariness of the flesh. So Eutychus trying to get the word, man. He was trying to get the word, sitting in the window, man, and he fell asleep trying to listen to Paul, and he died. You know what I'm saying? So, but the Lord had mercy on him, man, because he was trying to absorb that word, man. And have the scriptures like how we have the scriptures. Yep, today. yep. You know, so that, that's a beautiful thing, man. Now we gotta get we gotta get a couple on your house shot if we can. Time. All right, this is Matthew chapter nine and eighteen. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worship him, saying, "My daughter is now. I mean, my daughter is even now dead." But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Yahweh shall arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood twelve years, 
came behind him and touched the hem of, of his garment, for she, for she said within himself, within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Yahweh shall turn, turn him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, it, pretty much, you know, not pretty much, all the scriptures in the Bible, you know, every time uh, uh, Yahweh Shai healed somebody, it was because the other person had faith, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the, he always say, thy faith has made thee whole, right. you know, just like that woman uh, took hold of, of Yahweh Shai's garment, she stretched out her hand in, in, in belief that she that if she touched that garment, she would be healed. And that's she, the same she way. She had to go through a crowd. She yep. had to. She's trying to read through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Get his garment. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful, man. And that, to, to, if I could just touch his clothing, right? right? That just his clothing. All right, that 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 that'll help me uh, get healed, man. That's 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 a lot of faith, man. Because most people are going to expect the Lord to put His hands on right, you, right, right. do something like that. She said, man, if I can just touch the hem of His garment, man. Right? That's not even, that's like, the hem is like the outer stitching. Right. If I can just touch the hem, he'll, he'll heal me. He says, thy faith has made thee whole. Because she, that's how you know, ultimately, uh, your faith is, all of these things can be done through your faith, man. Yep. Your faith is what's going to carry you on, man. Uh, all right? Because the Lord, like, all right, since you believed, then you're going to be healed. You're going to become stronger. You're going to become better. It's because you believe that it can be done. That's why I say, is, if you only believe as a grain of a mustard seed, you can be able to remove mountains, man. You see, so you got to believe in this thing, man. And that's how you know that all the elect from, from, the, from the greatest to the smallest all have faith, you know, and we all have our different measure of faith. Mm -hmm. But even like the women, the women have faith yep. that she would touch Yahweh Shah's garment, that she would be healed. Yep. You know, so that's just to show you that even, even you're going to have women and children believing in, in the Lord mm -hmm. and they're going to be saved through that faith, especially in these times to come. Yep. And she, she had been going through hell. I'm sorry, brother. You want to say something real quick? She would have been going through hell. 12 years of issue of blood, man. Yep. You know, and that may not mean that every day she was bleeding. She could have been. Uh -huh. But maybe it was like every week, every two weeks. You know, having uh, um, uh, inordinate, uh, well, not inordinate, the best word, uh, frequent uh, periods. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you, a woman usually have a period about once a month, right? But if you have a, you, you, you bleed out, you bleed out every one or two weeks, it's, it's abnormal. That's the word I look for. Abnormal periods. All right, so she's like, Lord, I need help. Lord, help me. You see what I'm saying? So after in 12 years of spiritual too, you know, but after 12 years, now she finally was in a, in a situation where she could be healed by Yahweh Shah, man. The same thing is going to happen in these times, brothers. So like, I had a uh, quick precept. This is Malachi 4, starting at verse 2. This is, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So it says he's going to arise with healing in his wings. And when you go into that word wings in the Hebrew, the word there is kanap. All right? It says wing, extremity, edge, wing, border, corner, shirt, skirt, corner of garment. So that was a prophecy about Yahweh Shai with that woman who touched his garment. That's bad, that's bad. You know? Mm -hmm. And that, that's what the Lord coming with, man. He's, he's, he's a physician. He's coming to heal, man. All right? But you got to believe that he's coming to heal. You know, because just like that, y'all believe y'all doctors heal, but we know that doctors don't. Right, you right. see, so y'all y'all really don't believe that Yahweh Shah, our Lord, is gonna heal you. Hey, and if I may, that's why it says in Sirach, uh, Sirach chapter two, verse ten, it says, "What? Look at the generations of old." See, we have all these accounts of, of, of our forefathers, the ancient men that were serving Yahweh Shah, and guess what? They believe, and the Lord healed them, man. Hey, so guess what? We got to be in that same spirit in the times that we're coming into. Because we are approaching, hey, treacherous time. Where your faith is going to be on the line, man. The Heavenly Father is going to see hey, where your heart at, where your mind at, man. Because, hey, many of our people say they believe, they say they believe, until they come into a situation where they have to show that they believe, man. See? So that's why, hey, we have these great accounts of the men of the Lord before. Because it says, hey, uh, matter of fact, let me get that. That's right, man. So many accounts. I'm sorry, brother. I didn't mean to cut you off. You got it, brother. You know, but that, that's what they say. You can let me know when you get your purse. But uh, so many times in this society, where we're seeing the people are getting sick out here, but nobody's calling on the Lord except right. the elect, hopeful elect, man. Right. Wait, wait, where you calling on the Lord, man? They say, nah, I'm feeling sick. Let me let me call the doctor. That's what y'all do, man. What about calling the heavenly Father? Uh, Go ahead, bro. This is Sirach chapter two. 
verse 10, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? See, and we got the aid. Hey, this was written for us, man. Especially in the times that we're coming into. And that the, hey, the Lord is dealing with us, man. He even tells you in 2 Ezra 16 chapter that what? He will guide us, man, to not to fear. See? So we got these accounts for us, man. And that's why it was so important for our enemies to remove the name of the Lord from our, from our mouths. Right. To remove our language. To right. uh, 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 remove us from uh, keeping the law, right. statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Right. You know, because people, when they read that, they don't understand it. But we didn't have that. Uh, uh, we didn't have the name of the Lord with us at that time during captivity. You know, we didn't. We didn't have it. But now we have the name. Now we understand that we have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. You know, and, and, and do as we're commanded. Now the Lord is going to hear our prayers. You know. That's right. Wisdom of Solomon is fifteen and twelve. For it was neither herb. Nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O, o Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, would heal it all things. Right. All right, and you know, and that's that's what our people do. They trust in, you know, going going to the doctor. All right, again, prescribe these medicines. All right, and even even like your people that that believe in natural herbs. All right, the, the thing that they missing is is, is believing on Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, praying in His name. All right, and then you you pray. To your how about Shemel Shai, then you take the herbs. All right, but these people, they believe that herbs can, can heal you. All right, and just like Dr. Sebi. Yeah, he had wisdom and knowledge of, of, of the herbs, but he still died. That's because he, he didn't have the truth. He, he wasn't uh, calling on your how about Shai. He died from a sickness. Oh, shit. Well, apparently, that they, they, I think Esau took him out. Allegedly, right, right. I think Esau took him out. They, see, Esau wise with his uh, his demonic ways. You know, let's let's take his ass by sickness. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a beautiful way to take him out. Like if he was serving the Lord, would Esau eat him? Would, would he had had the ability to just grab him up like that? See? The Most High would have guided his steps. He yep. would have been in a whole other place with Esau eating. You know, the Most High be working in the background, man. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were trying to get you over here, but then you left too early. And they, you know, stuff like that would have happened. Yeah. Hey, and just like I was talking when I was talking about the weapons, the herbs are the same thing. Herbs, I said, weapons ultimately to the men of the Lord are just accessories, right? So if a man of the Lord got a gun, that's just an accessory. But people in the world, they trust in that. The same way how herbs work, right? Herbs can't, we in these bodies, herbs can do great things. But at the end of the day, if the Lord wants your ass to be sick, it don't matter how many herbs you put in your body, you're going to be sick. Right. right. So the same way as an accessory to the men of the Lord, but the Lord is the one that's gonna heal you, man. All right. You got it, bro. This is Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. So you got people in the world what they'll do before they, you know, many athletes they'll watch a, a motivational a, a motivation video. Mm -hmm. But hey, this, hey, these scriptures are inspiration, our motivation. You know, whenever we get in a jam or whatever we know, and hey, we got the names of Yahweh by Shemal Shah, and hey, the Lord's right. gonna deliver us, man. That's right. And it says that, uh, verse 17, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And if you're serving the Lord, you would know to seek the herbs. Right. You know, but if you go to Esau, eat them, he's going to be like, here, take this. <laughs> and you're going to be like, what's in it? He don't know what's in it. All, right. All he knows is when this happens, just give them this medication. Yep. That's why it says a wise man would not abhor them. Right. You see, but these people are unwise, man. They go, they, the first, as soon as they get a little cough, they a doctor, what, what, what can I get? You know, what can you give me, man? And he, he prescribed you some stuff that you absolutely don't need. Right. And how much more are these people children, man? You see, they, even these pediatric facilities, right? Pediatrics are, uh, pediatricians are doctors for children. They doing the same thing to the children, man. Getting that surplus in money, man. You see, they don't really care about the health of these children, man. That's why you got to get inoculized for everything and immunizations for everything, man. You see, when your, your true, uh, your true uh, medicines are supposed to be herbs, man. If they were so intelligent, the why are the children still coming out uh, when, uh, as toddlers, obese, 
they having uh, 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 issues with particular things like sinus issues. They're just having these little children have like issues. But I thought that y'all were so smart. They're supposed to be healthy. They uh they they in Babylon giving their child uh, McDonald's quarter pounders every day, right. but wondering why they sick. Right. Uh -huh. You know, then take them to the damn uh, <laughs> sorcerer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, but you know what? Bugged. And I, I observe things like that. I observe how uh, the parents they'll be in better shape than their little children. I'm like, but but the thing, but the time that the parents were growing, they were eating real food. Yep, yep. You know, and the children they're growing in this generation, they're not eating real food. And our portions are larger. They say like it's like ten right. times out the size of what they used to be because there's no nutritional value in the food. Yep. Now you got a little tubby magoo. Right. Tubby eating magoo out here looking through. Right. You see, but things things have got to change, man. Things have got to change. Hey, this is spiritual shirt. The world is sick. <laughs> the world is sick. And the world was throwing up, and the eyeballs is red, man. You see, the the earth is sick, man. Yep. With a blood. Hey, I, I can say even in the you know growing up in the Levi household. Shit, sometimes we ain't want to eat, you know, the food our OG made. Yeah, yeah, you want, you want some McDonald's. You want some McDonald's, you know, so I put more now on these times. These kids don't want to eat so-called real food. They eating out, Uber Eats. Yeah, now, yeah. Well, see, you got you to gotta train up a child to eat those kind of foods, yeah. even when they're young. Uh, they be at school, they got their little fucking Tupperware with their home lunch. And the kid pull out a goddamn kitty meal. Right. You know what I'm saying? With the McDonald's arch on yeah, that bitch. They get right. sad. Like they got the like they got the bad food. <laughs> you see, this is Babylon, bro. Uh, real quick, Ezekiel, uh, what's that, four and thirteen. You know, this we're we're living in a place of hell. We're wondering why all of our people are sick. You have all your foods are abominable, man. Alright? You got pork and everything. You got shrimp, crab, and lobster as delicacies. Right? All you the McDonald's meat, they say that's human flesh. You got a guy that said we we take the children and we take humans and we sell it to McDonald's and put it in their burgers. You see, but y'all don't hear that. These people about to leave here and still gonna get a McDonald's burger. People don't and question, that's human flesh you eat. People don't question how is there how is there enough beef to feed all these people every day? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? The dude on Super Size Me did that uh thing. He ate super. He ate McDonald's every day and look how obese and unhealthy he got, man. Every day. You got it, bro. Ezekiel 4 and 13, it says, And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their bread, defiled among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. That's right. So we got to eat our bread defiled amongst the Gentiles, man. We were talking about water. My brother, brother pulled up the camp. You know what I'm saying? He like, hey, y'all brothers want some watermelon? We like, yeah. So we smacking on it. I'm like, you know, and I told the brother, I'm like, even this is through. He's like, whoa. He paused. I'm like, whoa, what's wrong? I'm like, it ain't got no seeds in it. You know, so but we still eat it. Obviously, we in Babylon. You want some watermelon? Get you some watermelon. But you know, you go into Publix or Walmart. They don't even have seed options. You know what I'm saying? All the watermelon is seedless. You see what I'm saying? But we got to eat it defiled, man. That's that's uh, GMO stuff, man. People don't question it. They just buy it. Yep, yep. You know. Oh, what's good? What's good? <laughs> what up, man? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's B-O-A, oh, 20 man, B-O-A. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. We ain't taking no pigs, bruh. We record. We, rec we good, man. The spirit keeping us fired up. We good. We good, man. You know, y'all need to be out here, too. You know? Y'all need, hey, need to believe in that word. Y'all need to be out here, too, man. What that mean? But you got to Is it written in the book of life, though? Yeah. It's a difference just because it's written in the Bible. Don't mean it's written in the book of life. It's two different things, man. Real, 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 We're the twelve tribes. What, what, what's your father from? Where's your father from? Where's your father from? Like, like, what's his ethnicity? Oh, he's probably black. My, my father Cuban. Your father Cuban. So you from the tribe of Manasseh, man? All right. And uh, uh, Manasseh in the Hebrew is Manashah, which means made to forget. And see, that's that's probably why you you might say like. You might call yourself Cuban, right? But you're not. The, the, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father calls you, uh, calls you Manasseh, man. Well, hey, what we talking about is nothing funny. It's not a game. It's the truth. 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 Hold on, bro. I ain't said this shit was funny. I just said, Negroes. Negroes is just so you can identify. Yeah, who you are. Who you are. That's all. That's all. Because you all right. Black is the color. It's really the same. What, gonna break it down to what, what color? What color is your skin, brother? All right then. So why we call you black? 
Right. That don't even make sense. And you see what I'm saying? Negro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's black. It's right. Spanish, you see? Means black. So it's the same thing. And really, you don't want to be identified as a Negro. You rather be identified as Judah because that's a curse. The fact they call you black or they call you a nigga or you know what I'm saying? They call you Cuban or whatever. That's that's really a curse because that's a proverb hey, and a byword. Put the signs. Yeah, yeah, you put them up because the wind blowing. That's a proverb and a byword. Hey, I got a question. Go ahead. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, okay. but, but, but we, wait, no, wait, 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 though, wait. Wait, but wait, we get paid by the Heavenly Father, bro. We don't, we don't get paid, hey, we don't get paid dollars. If you don't repent, no, bro, you ain't listening to us. See, that went over your head. We don't get paid actual money. We get paid in spiritual money, bro. The Heavenly Father's gonna reward us for the things that we're doing. We don't get paid money from men, bro. See, it says store your treasures in heaven because the money that they got steals do steal it's corrupt man. man you know hey man hey man if you don't hey i'm gonna say it like this if y'all repent the lord gonna destroy y'all man y'all gotta repent man you gotta cut them dreads then you gotta cut them dreads then bro the dreads is unlawful in the eyes of the lord and what is no, it's not. Company? Who told you that? Back up, back up, back up, back up bro. Back up. Bro. Back up. Stop trying. Hey, if you want to be famous, the Lord will make you famous, bro. So chill. <laughs> okay. So who? Okay. Wait. Well, no, no. He got. He got a sincere question. Who, no way. He got one. He said it's wisdom. Who told you that? Um, Russ Martin. See, that's off. That ain't that ain't biblical, right? Uh, let Let's get uh real quick. Let's go to First Corinthians eleven. This we gonna nail this in the head for you. You know, because when we tell you something, we're going to get the Bible to, to help you understand why. Factual. It's factual. That's okay. right, brother. This is First Corinthians 11 and 14. Five. First Corinthians 11 and 14, it says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? See, and that, that, that not even, we're going to get into the dreads too, but a man having long hair, it's a shame. It's just like, brother, like, you know what I'm saying? You got a masculine figure, but if you were halfway down the street, <laughs> All right, some tighter pants on and your dreads hanging down. I'm like, that's a, that's a woman. That's you see what I'm saying? So the Lord lets you know that that's not a good idea for men to have hair. Right. So that's unlawful according to the Bible. But when it comes to dreads, that's a heathen custom, right? That's dead hair. Mm -hmm. That's not hair is not lively, right? right. So the, the Rastafarians adopted that and adopted smoking weed. The Bible said you ain't supposed to do those things. Right. And Samson didn't have dreads, bro. He had braids. Mm -hmm. He had seven braids, mm -hmm. right? And so this is why you got to go into the understanding of the Bible. But that's a... Uh, the, the dreads come from uh, a heathen god. See that? A heathen the god. The, the Rastafarians got that from the from the so-called. Um, so this is where East God Indian. of Sheba. That's the rich, yep. rich See, God of Sheba. Everything, everything that 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 um, that's pushed out here, it come, it has a root to it. Just like Christmas, the roots to Christmas is pagan. Mm. So you got you got to go to the roots of everything. Uh, um, July 4th, the roots of that is pagan. Yep. See, that's what people don't do. It's Psalm, just says, um, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Our people don't read and research and research. Right. You know and, and you, if your God looks like that, that's a problem, bro. That's real. Same you see thing, what I'm saying? <laughs> same now, thing that she thought. She thought that her hair would give her strength. Now, yeah. you said it was dead hair, right? Yep. Now, as is dead hair, mm -hmm. my hair continues to grow over the years. That don't mean it's not yo, dead. Yo, your top of your hair, but your hair that's right my, here is my limp, through. My, it's no, through. my limp is it's continuing okay. to grow. Oh, by dead, okay, so when your hair, uh, hair is lively because, not just because it grows, right? right? Dead things can grow, bro. Correct. You know what I'm saying? But it's because when, it, when your hair locks up, it's, it's, it's shutting down what it's meant to do. Your hair is meant to thrive. Your hair is meant to have excess but that shuts down any air and nutrients getting in between it but nonetheless let's let, let me get this real quick Psalm 15 and yeah yeah and uh get get the word locks and uh judges as well Psalm 15. 15 and 4 okay Psalm 115 and 4 says their idols are silver and gold the work of men's hands uh, keep going keep going it says they have mouths but they speak not they have mouths but they speak not that picture of that that fake god, that, that god issue, go ahead right? eyes have they but they see not they got eyes but they don't see go ahead it says they have hands, it's like they have ears, but they hear not. Ears, but they don't hear. Noses have they, but they smell not. Yep, they got nose, but they don't smell. So the true image of the Heavenly Father, he looks like us, man. He's a so-called dark-skinned man and his son. Correct. So uh, that's what we're supposed to be imaging ourselves after, not idol gods. Now, man. when you say honestly, mm -hmm. he is um, our image after us, you know what I'm yep. saying? The Bible just shows that. Listen, I'm a little tipsy, so it, you know what I'm saying? It's coming off a little different. Okay, I understand. But, um, what I'm saying is, also, they said God was also a man of bronze skin yeah. and long hair. No, long hair is not in there. 
So what was it? We gonna we gonna read it for you. You want us okay, to read it for you? Read it for me, please. Get Revelation one. Uh, Revelation one. And we, you got hold on, brothers. Hold on. Get, hey, give your man five minutes. Hold on, brothers. Don't interrupt. I'm trying to talk to the man. He, he got some sincere I'm questions. Gonna, listen, I'm just saying. Look, them boys on camera. The boy ain't on okay. camera. I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not trying I'm to interfere. That's okay. Side, that's okay. Boy, they not. A, no, they in the game too, bro. They no, bro. We all we winning. You need to try to be winning. Don't worry about it. them. Brothers is in the tomb. Them okay, brothers so is with us, bro. Bigger question before you find the um mm -hmm. the chapter. What what is the um the garments? Yes. Oh, that is it. It, it kind of it's a sign. So the scriptures talk about in the last days, sackcloth. men shall be wearing sackcloth. It's okay. because our people should be in a state of mourning right now mm -hmm. because we're the true kings of the earth. Right. But right now we're at the bottom. So we are in a state of mourning, but this also the Messiah is funny because the Messiah also wore one of these. It's gonna break it down in the same way we talk about his description. So it's gonna say it. Go ahead. This uh, is Revelation one, starting at verse thirteen. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the Messiah, clothed with a garment down to the foot. He had a garment down to the foot, Correct. right? Correct. So it's giving you what he had on. Go ahead. It says, and girt about the path with a golden girdle. He had a belt on, like a war belt. Correct. Okay, go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hair. So it's letting you know the color and it's letting you know the texture. See like that brother's hair? That's a woolly hair, mm -hmm. right? So the Messiah's hair looked like that. And they say he had long woolly hair, right? right? right. He had white woolly hair. Go ahead. Yep. It says, as white as snow, mm -hmm. and his wisdom. eyes wisdom, were, right? Wisdom. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes was a flame of fire because that's a prophecy from Genesis the 49th chapter. He drank wine. <laughs> hey bro, don't no, no bro, don't let it, no. See, bro, oh, stay focused, bro. Stay focused, bro. Stay focused. Go ahead, continue. That's just say you're trying to. say, yeah, bro. Don't don't get tempted by that. Go ahead. It I'm says, tempted. I'm anything. Go ahead. It says, and his feet were like unto bra fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. Brass is a derivative of brown, like a penny. Okay. okay. But just in case, they want to say he's Middle Eastern or something. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So if you take a penny and throw it in the fire, it's going to be real dark brown. <laughs> Correct. So this is the image of the Messiah. And he said, when in the Gospels, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen my father. Mm. So God is his father. Mm. So... He's a dark-skinned man and with white woolly hair, and so is his father. Yep. Hey, Slacky, and I got another precept mm -hmm. about the long hair. It's mm -hmm. Ezekiel 44 and 20. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this locks is talking about braids, technically. Right, right. But they, you know, cats be having hang time all the way down their back. You're not supposed to do that, man. Yep. Men are not supposed to. If you carry yourself as a man, you know, because, say, for you got long hair, your woman got long hair, and your daughter, like, Daddy and mama got long hair. It needs to be a difference. You see what I'm balance, saying? Balance. balance. That's right. It says, they shall only pull their heads, meaning to shave it. Right, you cut. It means to cut. But this word here is a uh, lock for Samson. A lot of people talk about Samson. The word in Hebrew is uh, makalapa. Makalapa. And it says a braid, a lock, or a plait. And down here in Florida, they be like, oh, he got some plaits. Like, it's your, boy about got, like your boy. He yeah. had plaits, right? So that's talking about he had seven braids on his head. He didn't have dreadlocks. You see what I'm saying? So that's something, you know, things like that is why we, we that's why we out here to edify our people and to tell you, according to the Bible, what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. You see, based on the Bible, not just based off of how we feel about it. Like even your beard, you got to let that grow, fam. You can't shave that off. Getting lineups, you can't, you ain't supposed to do that. And it's all Bible verses to back it up, you know, but ultimately we're not under the law, but we keep the law to the best of our ability. But we believe in the mercy of the Lord, man, because the Lord is coming back to judge this place. Consider this. Where else are you going to find access to the men of the Lord who understand the scriptures <laughs> like this? Your church ain't never told you this. Your you can't. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> See, lying. See, your church ain't never told you this, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna All right, bro. I do respect All right, take care, man. Yeah, man. Yep. I'll give you a few times. If I see you about three more times, you still got them dreads, brother. I'm going to have to cut you down, brother. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's right. Hey, it starts with the trap. Pray on it, brother. All right. All right, brother. He had a decent spirit. Yeah, he had a decent spirit. Hey, hey, that one dude with that, the flag, I was through with him. I was through with him too. He, you can tell, he, he was like how lively he was. Like he was just too much. See, he talking about, take, let me take a picture with these boys. Hey, and brother, I, I want to say this. For all of the brothers that are on the side, y'all already know this. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't even got to say it, but any brothers that's on camera that may be on the other side. Hey, brothers, we're all a part of the unit, man. We're all fighting the, uh, for that penny, man. All right? You know, so the, there is no... Difference. Why we these these brothers out here making a call in election? Sure, these brothers are coming out to the highways and the byways, man. All right, brothers fighting to be a part of the hundred forty-four thousand and the one third, man. All right. So, but he, he oh boy, he just he just got the game messed up. So I just want to say that don't let men like that try to sift into your mind. No, 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 no
guys like that. Dude, that dude was completely through. But you know, that's the, that's the thing. Out of men, you got to try to find who's the one that's willing to receive the information, man. You know, that dude was through, man. You know, that one brother, his spirit was, his spirit was much different than the other, than the other man. <laughs> oh, that's the water, bro. His spirit was much different. Right, it was. I probably can't even, I can't even fit this out. You can't even fit like Jake, right. Jake don't know how big I am. <laughs> and this is the only place where you're going to find oh, this. Look at you. Look at you. Snug. Yeah. Snug. Snug in that The water, bro. The water, bro. <laughs> The water about you outside. <laughs> God. But yeah, man, you know, and that's why we out here to edify. And he, you know, I, re, I respect the brother at the end of the day for saying, I'm going I'm to try to, I'm going to try to, you know, see what, I don't know if he is, but at the end of the day, like I said, I'll give a few times and then let you know that's when you got to, after one or two admonitions, reject because then he's a heretic. So, you know, we see him time and time and time again and he still got them dreads. We know that he's not sincere. But hopefully next time we can catch him a little more sober. Our people need to take advantage of this access, man. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go anywhere else and, and, and find men that can break down the scriptures like this, right. man. Yep. Who can answer all your questions like this? There's nowhere else, man. You know? The scriptures say they misuse the prophets. Right. Huh. You can't, you can't go to church and ask the pastor all these questions and get all these answers. Not at all. You can't. Yeah, just pray upon it. And matter of fact, speak, speak to Deacon uh, James over there. He'll, right, right, right. he'll, 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 he'll deflect, deflect, deflect. <laughs> Hey, and that, and that, that, the other dude, not the other one with dread, but that was his way of misusing the prophets. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, trying to see what what we talking about, he wanted to be a, a, a clown, wanted yep. to be funny. He was the guy that was drunk till he offended. Right. See, the other one was kind of tipsy, but he was still in his right mind. So, cause y'all, y'all know me. Usually, when cats drunk, I tell him to beat it. Right. But he was still in his right still mind. But, right mind. but this, that guy, he was drunk. He was, he was, he was off his level, man. But see, he, he don't know. That's how he is in the spirit as well. He, he's walking around here drunk. He don't know who his enemies are. He ain't got no covering. Not he don't aware. know which way is up. Mm -hmm. He don't know nothing. Yep. Totally drunk, man, with that Babylon juice, man. Yep, yep. Because he'll turn around and he'll be super friendly with Esau Edom, but then he'll be totally disrespectful with his own brethren. Yep. And see, this is why he's talking about, he's like, let me get a, let me get a picture with these boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, this celebrity thing. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you ain't get, we ain't out here to take pictures, bro. He like, but y'all got a camera going. The camera is up for edification, man. Or the camera is not up because we trying to be famous on YouTube. All right. We want the Lord to be famous. We want his word to be famous, man. Real quick, because y'all give me uh, Psalms 19. Bob Kusha. Psalms 19 and maybe started uh, maybe three or four. Psalms you know, 19. yeah, I think like three or four. Let's start at um, verse one. You can start at one. Yeah, you can start at one. This is Psalms chapter 19, verse one. The heavens declare the glory of the most high. And the firmament show up his handiwork. Mm -hmm. And his handiwork. The Lord lets you, and we were talking about how the Lord is an interior decorator. The Lord is a designer, man. Right. All right. And so his handiwork. Go ahead. Day unto day, utter his speech, and night unto night, show knowledge. Mm -hmm. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. That's right. There is no speech nor language where the voice of the Heavenly Father is not going to be heard because you got brothers who are waking up all, all across the earth who can give you the breakdown for the understanding of salvation and destruction in your language. And I just did a lesson not too long ago about how brothers will be speaking fluently in other languages soon, man. Right. So it's really going to be, ain't, ain't going to be no excuse, man. But brothers all across the earth, earth speaking in uh, the tongues of different languages right now to give you the understanding of Yahweh Shem Yahshua in this Bible. Go ahead, brother. Keep going. Yep. Verse 4, their line has gone out through all the earth mm -hmm. and their word to the end of the world right their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world that's talking about the, the unicorn man using the internet right by way of the internet our line has gone out everywhere so this is the line right here you know, like we said earlier is the brother say hey i'm tuning in from mexico right you see what i'm saying that's that line going out because if we was out here teaching without the internet that brother from mexico wouldn't be able to hear us you see so this is why now you know yeah brothers we travel and things but you don't have to we don't got to go travel over to Brazil and Australia to put the word out. It's brothers in Brazil. It's brothers in Australia. You see, teaching the word, and they can find out online. We don't got to travel, right? right? And, and be like, oh yeah, you we about to, you know, go over there like IUIC do and make you more one more proselyte at twice the hell than they are. We don't got to go and, hey yo, bro, we about to give you the breakdown. We gonna set you up a camp here. We ain't got to do that, man. Cause the Lord now got some spiritual working. The same thing Esau used this World Wide Web, thinking it was gonna be for his benefit. 
All right? Which it turned out to be for the benefit of Yahweh by Shemiah man. I got it, you got it, brother. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth and the words unto the ends of the world. That's right, brother. It said, have they not heard, man? Have you not known? And this, this, our, our words are going out to the end of the world, man. Everyone on this earth, everybody's going to hear this word, man. And that's why the scriptures talk about every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, man. Because we didn't, we didn't spread this word, man. And it's getting soon to the point where everybody's going to have known and everybody's going to have heard, man. All right? Have you not heard? I was like, like, bro, we in 2022 and you ain't heard you an Israelite yet? The Lord going to destroy your ass, man. We in 2022. Ain't no re you a, you a lying, you lying if you talking about you ain't heard you an Israelite. You done heard that word Israelite somewhere, and but you might have heard it and just shunned it away. But your ass done heard you an Israelite, man. You see? You got it, bro. Matthew 24 and 13 and 14. And this gospel of the oh, kingdom good. Good. shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. And this is how we know that this gospel has reached throughout the four corners of the earth because we see the end manifest. Okay, the different uh, earthquakes, the uproars of the people, the famine, all right, the pestilence, all the things is lining up. We're seeing the elect of the Most High waking up. Yep, you yep. know, in all these various countries, man, you, you have uh, 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 brothers calling upon the name of the Lord, man. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, in little colonies, like in the Philippines and stuff like that, they're calling upon the name of the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful, man. Yep. Where did they get that from? They got that from the men of the Lord online. Yep. And uh, it, uh, I didn't even get the chance to watch the whole thing because I was rushing to camp. Well, not rushing, I was getting ready for camp. And uh, uh, Elder Ayatan, GMS on Air One, he said uh, it's a rapper named Rapper Cannabis. I guess he's from the 90s. Can he I said, bust? He said, yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, he said he, yeah. he's calling on the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Yeah, you see? Yeah. So this is the thing. Even though a lot of these rappers and celebrities not going to repent, change their way. But people are finding out that that's the true name of the Heavenly Father, man. All right? So, hey, it's, it's getting real out here. Rappers calling on the name. These rappers, they be watching us, man. Don't get it confused, brother. These, that's, they think they the celebrities. Hey, man, the, the, they, they are watching the men of the Lord, man. Lord willing, we'll be that number, man. What else is there to watch? Just like you you, 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 get, you get on Vivo and watch one of their videos. <laughs> they be like, oh, yeah, it's Saturday. Them brothers going out. Let me tune in. Right. You see what I'm saying? They know, man. They just, they so engulfed in this society and they just sold their souls where it's hard for them to repent. But their spirit know that this is the truth, man. Uh, you hey, know? And if, if, if rappers are hearing about this word, that means that there's not going to be an excuse for you people, man. Like people, people, people. Kendrick put it in the song. Yeah, he said that. <laughs> people, you know everybody heard that. Right. People, think, people think that these uh, entertainers and celebrities, they don't do everyday stuff like we do. Yeah, they do. They wake up, they go through their YouTube timeline, they check, they, you know, they're seeing videos just like we do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing I used different. to have that car. And all white. Who with a faux faux phone oh, back? Call out here, Shy. They they used to call it the slab, that cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite car. Oh, that's the box Chevy, ain't it? Yep. Se that's a '79 uh, '79 Chevrolet Caprice with the with the aerospace bubble back window, baby. <laughs> that's a Detroit stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot. I ain't even cut you off, though, brother. <laughs> I had a preset. You got it. Is Ezekiel 11, starting at verse 16? Therefore, say, thus said. The Lord of power. Although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Mm -hmm. So we're as a little sanctuary. We got what? Maybe a couple, you know, double digits of brothers in the camp. Mm -hmm. Compared to these mega churches, we're a little sanctuary, man. Yeah. And, th and these are the people who the Lord is dealing with, man. Mm -hmm. All right? In the nations where we're scattered. All right, here it is, we're in Babylon the Great. This is not where we come from, man. We're not Americans, we're Israelites. Yep. You know, we're gonna go back to our homeland through our Lord Yahweh Shah, who's gonna deliver us. All right, we ain't going to no Demona, Israel, man. We ain't going there on this side, man. That's where it's about to get destroyed. Right. Yep. And they, they, these people are setting up, you know, trying to go, go over to other lands that flee Babylon uh, doctrine, you know, uh, building up, uh, you know, I remember uh, HOI and Sabak. Uh, they was uh, trying to buy land and all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're an individual and you want to buy some land or if you're in the brothers and y'all got some shekels and you can make it happen, cool. But you ain't got to go out, we doing this for Israel. You know what I'm saying? We, we building a community where all the Israelites can come live in. That's through, man. All right, because at the end of the day, uh, what's that, Amos, uh, the fifth chapter? 
that goes in the building, laying field to field, you know, house to house, man. And, you know, so they, at the end of the day, that shit still going to be somewhere shrugged up in an in a area that's going to get hit with missiles, man. Niggas smoking weed. Right, right. You got, you got, you got an Israelite community. These niggas in there with dreads. Got lineups, line up smoking weed. It's trying to scope on other men's women. You know, shit shalom. off, man. Man, defiled, man. Right, shalom, I, I keep. <laughs> right, right. Shalom, I keep. You got a This is Romans chapter 10. <laughs> and, and I'm going to start at 17 if I can. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the words of the Most High. But I say, when they heard, yes, verily their sounds went into all the earth, and the word, their words unto until the ends of all the world. Mm -hmm. The yep. word is going out. You got it, bro. Yeah, that's right. Like the brother said, the word is going out, man. So you, you can't sit here and say you haven't heard it because this word has gone out since the four quarters. And if you, this is the thing, if you just walk by the camp, you mark, bro. Yep. Right. If you seen the YouTube video and you clicked it and then you clicked off, you want to go watch something else, you mark, bro. All right, your cousin told you, hey, we are Israelite. Nah, you crazy, nigga. I'm African American. What you talking about? You mark, bro. This word is going out through all forms, all ways. Okay? But hey, that's the thing. And that's the thing, too. You can flee Babylon, but you can't flee the judgment of Yahweh by Shemel Shot. Okay, this is uh, Luke 21, starting at verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that that day come upon you unaware. So you gotta constantly be taking heed to your conduct and to to, to yourself. Well, uh, you know, examining yourself, like it says, Second Corinthians thirteen and five, because surfeiting means excess of uh, wine and food, you know, gluttony. Okay, and then it says drunkenness. All right, being spiritually drunken too. Okay, and it says and cares of this life, man, wondering about worldly shit. All right, that could get you out the faith. And like it says, for as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So it's gonna be as a snare on the whole earth, man. The time of uh, Revelation 3 and 10, what did it say? The Lord said he's gonna try the entire world, man. Not just Babylon the Great gonna have to worry about the Karagma, the whole world. That's right. So let's say you flee Babylon, you wanted to go over there to China, guess what, they gonna still try to trip you over there, man. That's right. What hey. you gonna do? Yeah, hey, I want real, I'm sorry, brother. Um, uh, there's a scripture, if anybody can remember or how it goes, it says something that basically like, they pulled the shoulder, Yep. Something Zechariah. to that, Zechariah, oh, so my man, it's the water, you know, but because uh, you were saying people that walk by and just don't, look, that don't mean you ain't heard it. That, it, the word entered that ear, you just show, you shut it off, man, and that's what our people do, they, they, they don't even, uh, you found it, mm -hmm. Come on, can you pull it out for me? Zechariah 7 and 11, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder yep. and stopped their ears. You see, so they, they, that's what they do, they might walk past the camp, but that don't mean you ain't heard the word, man. You pulled the shoulder, you stopped your ears. I ain't listening to them niggas. Tune them out. You know what I'm saying? You literally see people stop their ears, man. And put, you know what I'm saying? So that don't mean you ain't heard. You mark, like the brother said, you mark, man. But you want to thought you got it back, brother. I just wanted to say that. Oh no, I just had a quick point, quick precept. This is uh, this is Mark chapter 13, verse 33, and it says, "Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is." See, like the brother Ottawa was going into, you, you, you never know when that day is going to come, man. That's why it says to take heed and watch and pray. Because like the brother said, hey, just, you can walk past here and you mark, man. So you, you don't have no cloak for your sins, man. That's right. And, uh, you know, like I told, this how you, this is the separation. Like I told Jake, I said, pray on it. You know, most people, I tell them, like, your prayers ain't going to work. But when you're in the world, all right, and you have, if you have a sincere mind, all right, that's what the Lord said. He winks at your ignorance, right? If you're in the world and you were part of the elect, when we was called, when we was in the world, we was calling on JC, right? But the Lord knew that, uh, Lord willing, we had that number, right? He knew that what we were trying to do, we were looking for him. So that brother's prayers could work if he is part of the Lord's elect. But if he ain't, hey, them shit's going to get kicked plenty, you know? But you got it, bro. It's Romans 13 and 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. All right? You know, so like you said in our side right, you know, make no turn to turn to the Lord because hey, the, 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 that gate to mercy, you know, is closing. All right? This word, you know, it, it, the Lord is wrapping things up, you know, and then, that, then, those, then those plagues and destruction are going to uh, come upon the world. All right? And it says, verse 13, let us walk honestly. 
as in the day, not in rioting, nor drunkenness, nor in chambering, and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh and Mashiach, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's it's time it's time to get out out of that merch spirit, man. You know, partying, drinking, and it, that, because because we spiritually in the times of Noah, all right? And people are not going to know, uh, people are not going to uh, take this thing serious until until destruction comes, until until you uh, until you get plagued, you know, with pestilence, all right? Or, 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 or you can't eat, you know, or, or, or martial law troops, you know, is, is is going up and down your street telling you to get your ass back in your house, you know? For real. This is oh you, you got, no you got it. Right. This is uh Second Chronicles chapter fifteen verse one. And the spirit of the Most High came upon Azariah the son of Odid, and he went out to meet Esau, and said unto him, Asa, Asa, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. And that's what we about to see. You know, all, all you people have forsaken the Lord and he's about to do the same thing, man. Because again, like we're telling you people, you know, you know, you forsake the Lord now, he's gonna forsake you in the time that you call upon him, man. You see, and that's why, hey, the, 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 the judgment that's about to come upon this place, and hey, that's how you're gonna see many people, they gonna fear. Cause like, how, hey, like how we gonna do these miracles, Lord, will we part that number? Many people are gonna believe Hey, when they see most of you niggas get taken out, they gonna say, "Damn, that's your how about your mouth shot? I gotta fear him, man." Yep, yep. So we coming, to, we coming into the, those same times, man. Yep. And, and, and ain't nobody giving you as much chances as, as your how about your mouth shot, right? Not not Esau, Edom. Right. It says no truth, no mercy, and knowledge in the land. You know Esau, he, he ain't showing mercy on you. Oh. You know you uh you uh uh fuck up. You know with your woman. You know, after so many times, she gonna leave you. But how about Shemel Shah? He's giving you uh, uh, years and years to repent. You know, we see the same faces uh, week in and week out, all right? And you know how much uh, opportunity that the Lord is, is, is showing you? You know, you, you leave Clematis today and, you, and, and the Lord still has mercy upon you. Where, where, where you drive, and you drive and make it to your destination safe. You, you, uh, you, you, you get to and fro to work each and every day. You know, the Lord is feeding you, all right? The Lord is showing you mercy after mercy after mercy. He's, he's giving you a chance to repent. So when destruction come upon you, hey, the Lord, is, he, he's going to be just. He's going to be righteous in, in all his ways. Yeah, that's right, brother, because, hey, he saw Edom. What does he do? You know, he gives you uh, three chances. Three strikes and you out. Three strikes and you out, man. But, hey, how about some outside, man? We've seen these same people countless of times out here, man. Mm -hmm. Week in and week out. The Lord is giving you, you people out there, chances to repent and come back, man. So and, like still, and still providing for you, clothing you. Right. Receive benefits that have not known you. How about yep. your mouth, side? You it. see? So, hey the, hey, the opportunity is there, man. So that's why, hey, we, we, we man, we, we trying to, you know, plead with you people to come back, man. Because, hey, guess what? Just like when, hey, when the ark closed, and that rain came, everybody was destroyed, like it say in Luke 17. It's gonna be the same way, man. Mm -hmm. when, right. the, when the opportunity of mercy, when it's gone, then that's it. Hey, and like y'all said, uh, Esau give you three strikes. Well, he get real talking, ain't even that, because the scriptures say uh, he looking for an opportunity to overthrow you. Right. You see what I'm saying? So he really, he ain't really ain't giving you no chances. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Esau like, oh, we got him. You know what I'm no. saying? Take him out. You know, if we can give him the full penalty, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how Esau get down, man. And so we're, we're coming into the times where we're realizing who we are and what we're about to do, man. And we're about to rule, man. And these so-called white people are going to be our slaves. That's right. That's what's about to happen, man. All right? That's right. Look, gung-ho. That's right. Get excited for the kingdom. Get excited to be a slave, man. Because that's all. Slavery is going to be all that y'all got, man. Y'all shit. They're going to they gonna have to make merch in their slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? They, they, they're mocking, but they don't know slavery is in the Bible. Right. See, he's mocking because he has not known slavery. Right. That's the thing, man. But when, when the time comes when he's going to be in them chains, his ass is going to be saying yes in the kingdom. But that's going to be after that. After a thousand years, they're getting torched, man. So they better they better make that slavery. You know, I'd say, you know, Esau going to be in uh, their little pits trying to make, you know, Jake and Jail be making uh, toilet wine. 
They're going to be having pit wine, trying to, <laughs> trying to make something taste good. But Esau, you, hey, that's why it says rejoice and be glad, man. All right? Because y'all, they merch is about to come to a close real soon. But uh, brothers got any, yeah, get your finals. We'll get them last ones, then we'll wrap it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is uh, Isaiah 62 and verse 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. You know, the scripture says that we labor not for ourselves, but those that seek wisdom as well. So we we, we out here watching the prophecies. You know, we, we sign the crime, making the videos day in, day out. All right, because we because we laboring for those, not we laboring for ourselves. All right, you know, and we love y'all by Shah, but we're also laboring for the hopeful elect as well. Right, right, right. Anybody else got a precept? Mike Ollard, I see your hand up. Jeremiah they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? For thou hast played the harlot with many like lovers, yet again to yet return again to me, the Lord. That's right, hey, no, our, our people are doing all type of spiritual fornication, man, idolatry. The Lord said you you went and played the harlot, but hey, return unto me, man. That's how that's how merciful he is, because hey man. You know, hey, call all y'all about Shema Shah. He better than me. <laughs> he better than me. See, you transgressing my ass. Beat it. <laughs> so, hey, man, call all y'all about Shema Shah for receiving us back. Because he could have gave us that mentality to where he'd be like, hey, I'm, a shun I'm done with them. They committed idolatry. But he receiving us back. So, you know, I'm, we thanking the Lord all the time. So, for have, being able to take us back, man. You know, you know, you got certain brothers who, if they wife would be in that situation, they might take them back as well. But brother, you better than me too. <laughs> but anybody else, I can. All right, uh, we're the Hebrew Israelites. We come in week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked nation, which is Babylon, according to the Bible. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites, according to the scriptures, along with you Israelite foreigners. You so-called white people and you heathen are going into slavery, according to the Bible. All right, with that, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom. Baba Ball. Baba Ball. Baba Ball. Baba Ball. Baba Ball. Baba Ball.